Back everyone. Today we're going to give you a diagnostic tool for your transactional processes. Okay, so we're going to use a custom visualization today called the Sankey diagram. Uh, it is helpful for processes like change management, incident management, request management. Um, you know, as a common example, you're going to have different workflows for um, uh, different workflows for, let's say, an emergency change versus a high risk change versus low risk change. Um, and in ServiceNow, you might have, you know, different different Glide workflows there um, to either enforce a process or or not. Um, so you want to see if that's uh, working across all changes or a specific category or group um, or risk level. So for that, we can use the Sankey diagram. Uh, it is helpful. Um, I think and it is a it's a custom visualization in the Power BI community so you can feel free to go out there download it take a look um, what it requires it's pretty simple straightforward um, you need to use obviously a metric so we're going to do changes total then you need a source and a target okay uh, so for change management we're going to use something like uh, phase state okay and phase Okay, um, so that's our, our source and our target. Okay, now what we have here is a visual representation of all changes across all time with no time filter, no group filter, no category, no subcategory filter. This is everything, okay? So what you can see is, generally speaking, most changes go from open to closed, okay? Uh, so we're talking about quite a few. Uh, then the next is, you know, 17,000 of them go through this, you know, from, from open to implementation. They may, not, they may also go to implementation in progress or, um, you know, pending uh, review, you know, review, pending approval, etc. number of different steps, but this is where you can kind of see if it's following your specific process. Okay, so next, like next let's say in ServiceNow that we have defined... Um, uh, a special workflow for uh, high risk changes. Okay, so what we want to do is add on a filter. Okay, and <clears throat> the filter will be based on risk. Okay. You can see we have quite a few fields there. Okay, so we're going to use uh, risk and we don't really care about those those that don't have a risk specified right now. Okay, so let's just look at this visualization uh, with the filter attached. So we'll look at very low, okay? And now we see most of those go from open to close, okay? Probably no change as we move into low, okay? And it looks like that's where most of our changes are, low risk. Now watch what happens as we switch to moderate, okay? Higher percentage going through you know, a new workflow to the next state being the implementation phase. And now watch it flip as we go to high. Okay, so as we go to a high risk change, you can see there we do want some sort of enforcement on the process. Okay, now here your concern might be the ones that just go from open to close. You know, why, why is that the case? Um, you know, and that may depend on a variety of things. It could be you know, high risk, simple change, um, you know, and, and maybe that can go from open to close. So that's where you would want to add other filters, and that's going to depend on your process area. But maybe you want to look at a specific, uh, you know, assignee group, or maybe you want to look at a certain subcategory. Um, and you can bring those filters in and use them as necessary for your specific process. Last thing you want to do, of course, is leverage this, um, you know, drill to detail because your question is going to be, you know, once you find ones that are aren't following the process as they should, uh, you're going to want to look at the details, and that's where we use this table field. I've shown this so many other times in in all of the other um, videos, and we don't really need to go into it. But essentially, you just, um, you know, put in the field you want, be it you know change number, uh, the short description, summary, etc. Okay, so um, that's a sign key diagram. I just want to introduce it to you, let you know, hey, these custom visualizations are out there, uh, very easy to take advantage of. Um, we'll be going through uh, a variety of them. Uh, the ones that are produced by Microsoft, a lot of times we've got a high degree of confidence that those will make it into 
some future version of Power BI Desktop, probably be more heavily tested as well. Um, but I, that being said, I haven't found a custom visual that doesn't work yet um, in the community. So um, just something to consider when you're importing those custom visualizations. Anyway, uh, give us a call or let us know if you have any questions about this video or others through the website. Thank you for your time. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day.